Hello and welcome back and that is right today we want to talk about the slightly disconcerting and worrying vulnerability that was found on own cloud uh, and this is not just any old vulnerability lord no this is the perfect 10 and that isn't as good as it sounds because that means the national vulnerability database rated this 10 which is as high as it goes it's basically it's mega critical now you may have heard a lot about this and we'll be talking about some of the main outlets right now look at that cookie there apparently i'm looking for pensioners born before 1962 with hearing aids um there's lots of the main outlets have been talking about this and it's worth highlighting that this is a serious vulnerability there is definitely things that everyone that is using um own cloud needs to do but it's worth highlighting that it's about how and certain uh, vectors have to be in place for you to be completely vulnerable to this but it's worth highlighting that when this was disclosed by own cloud this is an exploit that has been utilized by lots of individuals already which is detailed quite consistently and very very well i might add over on the bleeping computer article all of this will be linked in the description and again we will be referring back to that later on but real quick i apologize in advance for not being on camera right now if we go into obs i can put the camera on and as you can see We've got this really hazy camera. This is because uh, yesterday I was at the Synology Solution Day and all of the equipment I use there, I've not had a chance to unpack it at the time to make this video. So I apologize for me not being on camera for the sake of this video, but that is a particularly awful video image of me there. So I just thought better to have the actual information there on screen throughout, but I apologize for not being on camera. But for those that aren't aware, own cloud uh, which now a lot of people do utilize its splinter uh, alternative to there with next cloud is an open source software and it allows you to host files and you can utilize it in connection with cloud services but also locally migrated server devices are well connected to it now not a lot of people that watch this channel a lot of people have dabbled with it and it's used in conjunction with other services uh, with your storage device and cloud devices i would say a lot of users uh, use docker containers within it i would argue for a lot of test facilities then obviously still uh, kind of uh, cloud sync with a nas device but where things get bad is the fact the discovery of this critical vulnerability here again this is cve 20234910 being the main one to be concerned with about there this vulnerability was disclosed on the 21st of november as mentioned earlier on and as you can tell from that score of 10 this is serious what this is is a vulnerability built into an app that's utilized within nextcloud the graphy or graphi uh, component that's utilized um, an app that utilizes that component which is part of own cloud now this app user utilizes a third party library and if access for a specific url and this is the thing that's really annoying this the reason this got a 10 is it's given a pathway this vulnerability this specific url when accessed it gives users access to sensitive information it's an exchange of uh, the vulnerable internal credentials and security key information and the license key as well once that's sent back it leads to two things one it allows the hackers to directly interface with the mounted dockers there and you know not even the dockers but more on that later on and by dockers of course I mean containers i apologize um but this is also a lot of those keys can be duplicated a lot of those security credentials may be used elsewhere on the device which inevitably can also mean that other areas of your system may be affected now there are other security flaws alongside this that were disclosed two other ones that didn't get the 10 rating uh, and they affect authentication and the auth 2 app but they do you know pose similar risks as mentioned here but nowhere near as significant as this main direct point of access one here now, something that I think more so than any other platform that has been outlined in or was in the Beeping, Bleeping Computer article, that the actual widespread severity of this is actually relative. It's being, it's, you know, if you, you know, open up your Google News feed, for example, and we go in and just type ourselves in with, um, we'll go with own cloud there, you'll be able to see that this is already very quickly doing the rounds. But a lot of the outlets that are talking about this aren't really talking about it relative to the actual number of possible vulnerabilities there now what do i mean by that well several security agencies have already sort of stepped in and analyzed one how many users are going to be at risk and how many um, actual active uses usages there have been of this vulnerability thus far so as you can see tracking firm gray here reported that since it has been observed um 
It started on the 25th and they already started noticing 12 unique individual attackers trying to utilize this vulnerability. Then they analyzed, uh, or Shadow Server, I should say, analyzed um, basically setups of um, exposed instances and they located over 11,000 what they deemed to be vulnerable systems there. Now, again, that is relative because you would need to have a specific setup in order to be hit by this. Now, the users that are going to be impacted by this can fall into the following categories. Number one, people that have not updated uh, the Graphite app to the latest version, version 0.3.1, which is highly recommended you do. Also, there are users out there that are thinking if they disable the Graphite app, then they're fine. You know, they're going to be absolutely fine to carry on. But unfortunately, as detailed by uh, OwnCloud themselves, that does not limit the damage of what this can do. And they themselves recommend that you manually go in and delete the OwnCloud slash apps slash grab fee slash vendor slash Microsoft slash Microsoft test uh, um, slash get PHP info dot PHP file. Disabling this uh, in Docker containers doesn't allow this security vulnerability to be util utilizable to ascertain and get all of that security information. It's also worth highlighting that it's only uh, Docker's up to a certain point that are affected by this. What do I mean by certain containers? Well, if you're using Docker containers from before February 2023, you are not going to be affected by this because that vulnerability is not going to be made available to those older containers. So just bear that in mind before you start going out of your way and pulling stuff online. Again, Fair play to OwnCloud, they have rolled out with that vulnerability disclosure guidance on what to do with your own personal setup with regards to if you are utilizing that application and more in order to ensure that those access keys and those credentials can't be exploited across your broader system. Now, it's worth highlighting, this isn't some deadbolt-based situation we're talking about here. This is still a comparative, keyword there, comparatively small instance. It's a very serious vulnerability if you have that specific setup. I think what really bugs me more is the three vulnerabilities happening at the same time, opening the door to you know potential widespread utilization. And indeed, in that context, although there are only you know currently this many observed um, IPs tracking this, if we go for the 10 days, the 30 days, etc., over on gray, no uh, gray noise, it's still worth highlighting that you know this could build up to something worse. And if users of own cloud services aren't aware of this or are not actioning automated updates or at least are using automated updates on client side uh sorry on host side but not on client side this is where things could get messy because a lot of the wider spread ransomware attacks of course we are talking about deadbolt more than any other but some of the more widespread ransomware attacks came down to older systems running unpatched firmware. And that's, again, where own cloud utilization, this is going to be absolutely crucial. You update in those client applications more than just the cloud or a migrated uh, hybrid cloud host between them. Now, again, I've linked towards all of uh, the resources I've referred to throughout today's video. We're going to keep a light look at this, but it does seem like something they're going to be pushing very, very hard on on the own cloud side of things. And I'm not going to say this is a good reason just to completely step away from um, them, I wouldn't say that, but I will say keep an eye on how they handle this because what you tend to find a lot of these companies with vulnerabilities of these natures roll out, these things happen in clusters, not just clusters of three, but you suddenly see a flurry of vulnerabilities where there is crossover to how that architecture affects in between them there. But this has been that own cloud vulnerability and whether you should be worried and some of those directions of what you should be doing. Stay safe out there. Keep an eye on your firewall, keep those ports clock, uh, clocked and stay on top of your updates. I'll see you next time.